Hi guys, ignore the garlic bread in the background. Anyway, a few months ago, I remember I told you guys one of my goals was to get a sub 10 official average in competition. And the news today is just that I broke my PB average of five and average of 12 at home, as you can see. Here are the scrambles of the average of 12 if you want to try them yourself, because they are luckier than average. Solves 6 through 10 make up the fastest average of 5, which is my PB now of 9.41. And I really like that number because it's the descending perfect squares, 941. Also, my last few PB averages of 5 have been 10.02, 9.99, and 9.91, so it's nice to finally break free from this near 10 neighborhood that's trapped me. Also, I think the 8.80 solve was the only one that had a skip, which was a PLL skip. Okay, now ignore the boba. Sadly, I wasn't recording any of these solves, so there's no footage for you to watch. I'm so sorry. But anyway, both of these new PBs are a significant drop because they're both at least half a second faster than what I used to have. And if you'll notice, my, my current average of 12 is actually around what my average of five used to be before today. And I actually thought to myself, there's no way I can make my average of 12 go sub 10 because like I'm just not capable of that yet. But if we look at the actual times of the average of 12, you'll notice that there's a high 9 and a mid 11 about to roll out, and those could be improved with faster times. Now, the average of 12 at this point in time is 10.08, so we want to drop it by 0.09 seconds. Since there are 10 counting times in an average of 12, we just need the sum of those 10 times to drop by 0.90. So that would either mean, either mean having the next solve being a low 9, or just the average of the next two solves to be around 10.3-ish, which is actually pretty doable. A low 9 single is typically pretty hard for me to get, but let me show you the scramble I got for the very next solve, which I did get an 11.86 on, because if you look at it, it's very easy, and I think a low 9 should have been possible even for me, because we have three cross edges already attached to white, so we're doing white cross this time, and, and the red one is opposite from the orange one as it should be. Now we do have this pattern of blue, red, red, blue, which means that the blue edge is not correct relative to the red one, but the fourth cross edge, the, the green one, is connected opposite, like to the blue center. So you can see that we can kind of do everything together. So if we hold it with orange in front and yellow on top, then imagine replacing the blue edge with the green edge by doing D prime, R, and then D2, R prime. Or okay, let me just do it. So doing like this, so that like red and orange are opposite, but then the blue, who's like the bad guy, is correct now. If we kick it out with a replacement now, like these three are all opposite and they're correct relative to each, to each other, and this is here. So then you do D2, R prime. Um, okay, I'm back at the original scramble state. And before we do the actual four moves to solve the cross, it's a good idea to look ahead to first pair because the cross solution only uses R and D moves. It's D prime R, D two R prime. So that's not gonna move anything in this like upper left chunk. So I'm looking at this pair, the green and red pair, and this one's not gonna move. And because it's like D prime R, D two R prime, this guy's actually not gonna move by the end as well. So we can see that after cross, all you have to do is like a U and then like line up this edge with this guy and then you have a two gen rotationless solution into the back left, which is quite nice. So I guess we'll just do that. Like look at these two, these two are the guys you're looking at. See, it didn't move so you can instantly go into here and connect it. And then now they're paired up and you just insert into the back. I think in the actual solve, I was like, as I was solving this, I was sort of like tracking, I think the green, the orange and green pair. So I didn't notice that this connected up. So in the actual solution, I did that, which broke it. And then I entered into the back and I, I don't remember what else I did. It doesn't really matter, but it was not lucky solutions. Okay, that, that looks kind of lucky because like suddenly we have um, edges oriented and all that, but it wasn't that lucky. But after I got the 11.8 and then thought to myself, oh, I just killed my chance of getting a sub 10 average of 12. I decided to look at the scramble again because I remember accidentally breaking up that free pair. And I wondered to myself, what would have happened if I had caught that free pair and solved it and saved it and continued with the solve? Would it have been lucky? Would I like would a sub nine have been possible? So if we do the same moves again, remember we're tracking this pair. Then we solve it. So if, if I caught this in time and saw this, then I rotate to solve it. And then the, the orange and green makes sense next. Like that. And then uh, I guess this is not a good case. But we have one of the easiest OLLs, F sexy F prime, followed by the easiest PLL, 
a good J perm. And like basically last layer doesn't get any faster than that unless you skip a step or you do like ZBLL or something. So that was probably like the best last layer a CFOP solve could have. And when I did the solve again, like using the same scramble, but not knowing that that was coming up, I did it with a stack mat timer. I got 8.28. .8. So I just feel like, man, a sub 10 average of 12 totally was within my reach. Even though that sounds crazy fast for me, it's like within the realm of possibility. Let me just try doing the solve again so you can watch it, even though I know it's coming up, so it's not a legit solve. It's like practice down, whatever. Okay, that's it for the video. Um, ignore this picture of the pizzas. And I know that for the reconstruction of that last solve, there were a ton of inefficiencies. I know that for the second pair, I should have rotated in the other direction and all that. And I'm sure like people will notice other things I did wrong, but I just do not care because I'm not trying to be the fastest speed cube. I'm just trying to live my life. But yeah, thanks to you for watching and bye.